Hey guys, I've, I've tried a few times to make this video um, and I, I keep failing because it's so hard to talk about something that means so much to you in such a limited amount of time, right? I mean, I worked on at this studio called It Software for like almost two years and that is a big part of who I am because I'm only, you know, t two decades old, you know, so um, it's like a tenth of my life. Oh my gosh, right? Well, not really. I guess I'm more like closer to three decades. So maybe that's a third of my life or something. No, a fifteenth, I guess, a fifteenth of my life. But the point is, um, it was awesome. It was really, really great. I want to talk a little bit about it, but every time I talk about it, I always mess up. So I'm going to try this video again. We're coming at you from my office, by the way. This is my office in Jersey City. And I wanted to tell you that it's going to be taken down. I'm moving. I'm moving to a new job. And that's going to require me moving to a new state, which is kind of the impetus of this transition. Um, but, you know, there's reasons to leave. There's reasons not to stay. There's a, there's a lot that went into that decision. And, you know, while there may have been things I didn't like, overall, I had a really good time at its software. I think it's a great company to work at. And in this video, I'm not going to talk about anything that's secret. I'm not going to talk about anything that's proprietary. I'm not going to talk about anything that... I'm not allowed to talk about that I signed an NDA for. In this case, I'm just going to make a quick video to talk about what it was like working there, uh, expressing my legal right as a former employee uh, of a, an employer to say what it was like. So here's the deal. If you want to work at id, do it. Just do it. I had a great time. It's a really, really great studio. It's a studio that I think um, cares so much about its fan base. And I think anybody who's a fan of Doom or any of their other games has felt that, has seen it. Um, they really, really, really care. I, and that's something that resonated with me because I care so much. When I work on a game team, I try to become its number one fan. Uh, and when I was joining id Software, I went to all their previous games and I played every single one. And I was like, I want to understand it. I want to become the number one fan. I joined every single uh, YouTube channel that was a Doom channel. And I, all the Facebook groups, I joined the Facebook groups and something wonderful happened, which is that I saw within these Facebook groups, within these communities, so many other people who also were working at id Software. And it's because it was a community, it was a team that really invested in that community. These were people who played their own goddamn game, which sadly does not always happen in the games industry. And... You know, I, I, a quick anecdote, I was on a Facebook group and somebody asked some random question about the lore of Doom, I think it was Doom Eternal, and no one other than my very own creative director responded in that Facebook thread. And the creative director, he was saying how, you know, this is how the lore goes, and he was he was jumping in there in the Facebook group, and that was incredible. So I, I, I was like, wow, my creative director is in my own Facebook group. Like, that really meant a lot to me. That really stood out. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great fan base. So there's so much I could talk about here and I'm not going to be able to hit every topic, but the other thing I just wanted to say was it was a really great engineering team. It was an engineering team that I think, like I said before, you know, everybody was responding to feedback and they were offering feedback too, which I think is great because, uh, if I'm in a situation where I don't have code reviews, I was so just delighted that there was a, another senior engineer I work with. He knew to frequently find a CL I worked on and say, hey, here's a way that you could have improved that. And that was great. Um, someone going out of their way to try and help me get better. I, I saw that and I, I really valued that. And uh, it's not something you always get because a lot of times senior engineers are people who, you know, value that independent contributor track. They're people who, you know, want to stay in their lane, focus on their own thing. And so it's, it's always just a, a delight when you find somebody else who's, invested in trying to help you grow because you know you can only grow so much alone you can grow a lot more and faster if you have the the team behind you and i definitely felt like this was a team that wanted to invest in the people not just get the work done um with that being said you know there was, it was definitely a team that was focused i think and this is something i felt more and more as my time with them went on it was very focused on kind of the in-office experience and they were pretty serious on the return to office and as a remote worker, you know, even though I know remote work can work so well, uh, it, it hurt my feelings, to put it bluntly, that a lot of things that, you know, I had talked to people and they said it would happen eventually, like, never kind of came to fruition. For example, I really, 
really, really wanted to go to the studio in person. And uh, they never flew me down, um, which it really hurt my feelings because they said they would. And I don't, you know, I don't want to sound like a bitch, but it's like, that's something that I think is really important. And it's, you know, I was talking about how, you know, you have a lead and you, you, you see how a studio is run and you think, gosh, that's how I want to run my studio. And then you see other things and it's like, gosh, you know, people will remember, they'll forget what you say, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And I never want to make my employees feel undervalued. I never want to make them feel like they are not, um, you know, a part of the team. And I think what's really cool about it is it's a small team. It's a team that prides itself on that too. So we often say that, um, you know, people have said the analogy of it's like, it's like you're like a SEAL team, like a Marine, where you've got a small insurgent team where you're trying to surgically get the job done uh, versus, you know, we're competing against teams that are easily twice our size, right? If you've got an AI team that's like four people, well, it's not unheard of to have a, on a larger team, maybe like 10 or 15 AI coders. So it's a very different experience. And um, I think, you know, there's positives and negatives to having such a small team, but I really value the autonomy it provided me and um, the amount of work that I got to get done. You know, I put so many pixels on the screen, as they say. Uh, I got to work on a lot of features stuff, marquee features that I'm looking forward to the game releasing because I'll get to point it out and, and show you the cool stuff I worked on. So there's a lot of great stuff to chat about. Um, but I think I'll just cut it off there. There's there's so much other stuff. I, I my, my previous attempts at this video were like 40 minutes long, but I don't want to get sappy, you know? I don't want to I don't want to cry in front of you guys. I want to tell you that it was a great time. I had a great time. I'll speak to it more, maybe perhaps a little bit more candidly when um, the game comes out. But something that resonated with me was my studio director said this. He said, perhaps a bit less poetically, that if there is an argument in the kitchen, you will taste it in the soup. And I think that is very true. I have worked on some game teams where the final product came out and it had some problems. Okay, I, well, this team that I was just working on, they, they just released a game and it had some issues. And I think you can see almost in a way, you can kind of see into the studio through the product. And, and you know, obviously this guy's a director, a producer, you know, so he's, he's seen a lot more products than I am and he knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. But even as a little independent contributor, I can see that. I can see games that they almost look like they didn't have enough time or there was some sort of issue there. You can, you can smell there was a problem. And I am so grateful that id Software is a team that really wants to invest the time into doing it right. And they're not going to take shortcuts. And their, their players know that. They trust them after a really, really great heritage of games in the Dooms and the Quakes. And uh, they, see, they see how much the people care. They see them in their community. And they think, wow. These people are going to make a game uh, for me because because they, they really are not afraid to put in the time, to put in the effort um, to make it happen. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously rambling now. So let's just move on. It was a great time. Are you considering working at id? I recommend it. If you are trying to enter the games industry, I wrote a book, which I'm currently selling, All Proceeds to Charity. You can check it out. Link in the description. It's got some really great reviews. And I think... It's, it's, it's sold pretty good as well. So we've got, um, I think almost like a thousand dollars now so far we've raised for the Against Malaria Foundation. And of course, all proceeds of this YouTube channel are going to that uh, fund as well. So please, if you want to help, uh, support the effort to fight, uh, malaria, I mean, you don't need to buy my book, just consider donating directly. Uh, that's kind of the cause that I'm, I'm trying to champion right now. So please, uh, get behind that if you want. And if you don't want to, then hey, why not just check out some other great games? Uh, id Software's got a lot of great games out there, and they're going to be making some more. So look forward to more stuff. All right, this video is going on too long. I'm going to go. Bye-bye. See you later.